When it comes to a person or events in history, we must apply the evidential method or the legal historical method. For example, let's say you were a student and last Friday at 10.02, you had a very difficult, a hard philosophy exam. You couldn't prove that scientifically because you cannot repeat it. However, using the historical legal approach, you could prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. The professor could give testimony of it. The person you sat next to. Uh, you have the announcement about the exam. Maybe someone took a picture that day and there was a clock in the wall that records the exact timing, 10.02, when you started the exam. Maybe you have an exhibit inside your cuff. You still have your cheat notes, but you couldn't prove it scientifically. Let's say you're a businessman or woman. You cannot prove scientifically that you signed a very key document that brought in a lot of money to the business last Friday at three o'clock in the afternoon because you cannot repeat that. But using the evidential method, the legal historical method, you can. Why? You can give testimony to it. The notary who, who signed everything and notarized it could give testimony to it. You have a physical exhibit. You have the document that has been notarized and signed and stamped. People who attended could give testimony of it. The person you signed it with could give testimony of it. You could show beyond a reasonable doubt that last Friday at three o'clock you signed a document that brought millions of dollars in to your business but you couldn't do it scientifically. When it comes to the Christian faith, we must apply the legal historical method. In other words, looking at the evidence, the oral testimony, the written testimony, the exhibits, etc., to come to a conclusion, is there reasonable evidence to support that this is true or that happened? That's how we must approach Christianity.